Welcome to another show with uh, Destination Newry on, on the history of Newry. And uh, we have a, a very interesting guest with us today, uh, a member of an old established uh, Newry family, uh, a branch of an old established family, the McAteers, uh, closely associated with Old North Street. And uh, that's Mr. Eamon McAteer, and you're very welcome, Eamon. Thanks, James. I'm happy to be along. It's going to hopefully revive memories of uh, the town as I grew up. Uh, incidentally, I am not wasn't born in the town. My I was born in Dublin, but that's uh, you didn't hear that because as far as I'm concerned, I'm a, I'm a Newry man. I'm a town man. And actually, James, on my grandmother was a member of the, of the Bide family, and on the Bide side of the family we can trace roots back to 1793 up in St Mary's. Now your family uh, Eamon was closely associated with North Street and we'll come to that later but um, from earliest days uh, where do you remember the family living? Well, my early memories is uh, really in the back of the dam uh, well, they, well the, the address was Water Street, but actually we were living in North Street, uh, over where Gallagher's the, ta uh, the tailor ended up, beside Paddy Dorley's. So that was really at the top of Mill Street? No, uh, down, uh, down for down in the entries. More, down, do more you remember the... Paddy Dorley's shoe shop? Yes. Well, two doors over, well there was actually... There was Paddy Dorley's shoe shop, there was uh, a family called Mooney lived beside that, and then you had a uh, paper called Gillespie. Then you had, it was formerly Tweedy's Pond, but we lived over that, but the entrance was back from the back of the dam, number 32 Lower Water Street. So it would be pretty much behind the cathedral? Yes, uh, the bus, uh, the old bus stop. The bus stop, oh yeah. Actually, uh, yeah. lived opposite uh, Eleanor Toner. The Toner family lived opposite us, where we went in the Water Street. And Eleanor Toner people would remember saying with the yeah. uh, with the Hilton the Showman. Hilton Showman and my Paddy, Pat Jones, uh, the well, uh, footballer. Here's our, our first photograph here today, I mean, uh, and and um, if you just tell our viewers uh, exactly what we're looking at here, and and more importantly, uh, where where we're looking from. Where was that photograph taken, We were looking at a photograph of the town, I'd say in maybe the early 30s. Yeah. And the town isn't as big. We're looking from the back of the rocks in Chapel Street. But normally, people know the rocks in Chapel Street. I see the Bridewell down in front of me. I see what uh, the B&A shed, the river and the Albert Basin. I can see St Mary's Church. And to the left is the Dominican, but there's no barcroft. No, the, the, the fields are it's still a, a green field site on Doran's Hill. Uh, and in fact, um, I think it was 1962-63 when they started the, uh, the, 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 re, the building of Barcroft Park. We're probably looking at the old original barley field that was in hmm. Barcroft. And uh, there's a good view of Camden Mountain. Well now, if we move on, um, your family then, uh, the, 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 uh, the next chat that we have uh, is of, of River Street. And we, we in, in actual fact, in the background, we can see the reverse of, of, of where the yeah. shot was taken. We're looking at what the people, the people of Chapel Street call the castle. The castle. Which is... is Holiday's Folly. Holiday's Folly. Now, who were the last family uh, in that castle? I'm not sure now who the last family, but I knew, I know the Coulter family, the Miss Coulter, so I remember them live in on the high walk. And of course the Smiths. And the Smiths. Paddy Smith was born and, there. And uh, Des McGinnity lived in, in the castle mm. too. Now there was a good, a nice well, I remember spent many a day with late Uncle Sean cleaning the well and whitewashing the well. And a lot of days then uh, there was... Uh, Pigs had their own of the castle, and uh, then, but it was very dangerous. There was no protection at the bottom of the castle. Yeah, yeah. Well, the most important feature, uh, I suppose, 
uh, that, that that's gone now is the uh, the gas yeah, works. There's the gas, the gas works, the red brick building, and and the, the manager's the house. Uh, yeah. But the the gas works w was a, was a major feature of the area there. there wasn't was, it? Remember uh, from the chapel street end, fixtures the reach going up, and uh, unloading the coal for the coke. My father worked in the gas works for a while. If they don't remember that, I remember uh, used to. There's no bathrooms in the Red Row in O'Neill Avenue to the 1960. And uh, when the bathroom didn't keep the the water hot, get the steam up, we used to get uh, go down and get a bushel of coke. Well, you you funny enough, you preempted what I was going to say. I mean, because I remember uh, as a lad going to school. Uh, there used to be lots of people coming with carts and prams and bags of coke, and they also used yeah. to go to the gas works for tar. Yeah, for the for the, the, the white washing. Yeah, the white washing and the, the bottom of the mainly the country people. That's would right. Go for the tar. Yeah. But they get back just to the the uh, the coke that where we got we got it and we mixed it with slag, broke it up. Only Duffy was the man who waited, and uh, only you didn't get any. Very, very seldom on he spoke to you, but would get a bush of coke a week. But then there was a lot of people did really depend on uh, coke. I remember on, on coke alone. I remember him, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there was a very intense heat from the coke, coke wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, there yeah. Was a, yeah. There was a terrific. It was great for the back boiler. Terrific heat from it. And you came, yeah. you could doze. It was comfortable. <laughs> That's right. That's uh, right. But everybody all over the town went, as you say, James. Uh, broken wheel, four wheels of a pram. That's the, right. The, yeah. Uh, body, body of the pram taken away. We we had a bike. We put on the bike. Well, now, just just behind River Street, uh, here we have an image of of uh, Boat Street, and um, you know you can see you can see the uh, how the decay had set in. Right. The the housing yeah, the housing yeah, stock yeah. at this stage w was squalid. Yeah. Isn't that right? Well, looking at what uh, was the scene of the night dress, I remember Frank O'Hanlon. Uh, I know that was uh, Frank O'Hanlon in the next door, the arch door. Mm -hmm. Frank that was involved with the uh, famous soccer teams, Peter McParlin and Pat Jones, yeah. and that uh, Mids as they call them. I remember him living there, and he would come back to me in a moment who lived where the night dress. But beside that, up beside uh, there was a wall, big gate. Ward was Wardy's yard. The horse drawn the, the uh, four wheelers. Yeah. Now, uh, at that time, the port was going well, and everything was drawn by horse car, horse and four wheeler. Actually, my father did drive a four wheeler and sold coal for more more and money. But I think the last man that drove uh, horse and four wheeler. There was two, one was Pat, Pat John's father for Holiday Inn Shields and Kevin Torley drove the B&A. I mean, I mean Kevin Torley, you're quite right, Kevin Torley was a familiar sight with uh, a large clay steel yeah, horse and, and a four-wheeler and, a four -wheeler and Murned on Woody's, uh, I remember them delivering coal. I think a man called Kyle from, uh, from Drummer Lane. Uh, took over after my father in Murrindon Woody. But funny thing about Murrindon Woody, Murrindon Woody was on the quay and uh, there was the Clydesdale and there was a hunter. And every Sunday evening we ended up in Murrindon Woody's yard because the Clydesdale and the hunter had to be watered and fed. Mm. And it was part of our after walk on the Sunday we ended up in Murrindon Woody's but yard. I think uh, just looking at that photograph, Eamon, uh, it tells you uh, that was the, the, end, uh, the, 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 the really squalid uh, conditions uh, that people were living right. in well, actually, at that time. People lived in rooms. There's, yeah. There may be uh, at least two families living in, in some of the houses in both sides. Uh -huh. They were let out. There weren't flats or any apartments then. There were rooms. That's right. And very, very lucky. Actually, uh, my father found it very hard uh, when they got married. To find to get a house near you and it was more or less. I'm not sure. I think when we went to Water Street, it may have been about 1950 or 51, 
but at that time there was only uh, one coal top outside toilet. Now, to move on to, to North Street, North Street became uh, very important uh, and that's really where your your the bulk of your family time well, was actually, spent then, wasn't it? Actually, James, I, the first reference I got uh, to our family was not the, on the McIntyre side, it was my great-grandmother was Mary Costello. And Mary, the first reference I got to the Costello family was in 1861, living in the number one market square mm -hmm. at the foot of High Street. Mm -hmm. And then they went from uh, Market Square down to uh, Water Street, I think number 29 Water Street. It was a house owned by uh, Murphy's, the tannery people. It was my great-great-grandfather, my great-grandfather McIntyre was a courier, courier in the tannery. That was tannery. The, that's the same man that left the, the Murphy was, Trust. Indeed, yeah. My grandfather knew him well and spoke well of him. I, and he owned the, the uh, old bus depot, as we call it, the bus depot. It was actually the bus garage, was uh, the tannery. And then, uh, after they left uh, Water Street, they went over up the North Street, but not to where, not to 29. They went just to the top of the uh, entry beside Paddy Doherty, what was Paddy Doherty's shoe shop. Mm. And then they went over across to 29. Now, funny, 29 was a very f famous store. Anyone reading or looking through the open window will see uh, a mansion of Cathcars, or adverts for Cathcars. That was a uh, Cathcars store where Magateers ended up. Right. Now, there were a lot of entries and, and little uh, alleyways. Mm. And, and here's, here's a typical image here. Um, wh what was the name of this That's entry? That's the Carlyle entry. That was uh, up at Market Street. Uh, actually, it was very narrow and then it widened out. Now, uh, Tommy Place ice cream, they, that was their stable and later the garage when they had the, phone, the pony and cart, the, that was the pony was stable there. On the left there, I remember, I'm not sure who it was, but I remember uh, there was a man kept hens there when he was a child, which was common. Along the boat, uh, along Water Street, further along Water Street, Mrs. Patrick kept pigs yeah. in the middle of the town. There was cattle kept in the middle of the town. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not that long. Well, I wouldn't consider it that long ago uh, in my memory. Different days, yeah. Eamon. And also, I remember going to High Street the back of the house is over the uh, sack of uh, the empty sack to go up and collect fowl and take them down to the shop. And why they were looking at Lindsay Hill and I used to love, if I had no sack, if I was up making inquiries and coming down, I used to love running down Lindsay Hill to make a noise and a clump because it was closed in narrow space and you, you could hear the pain of, and you were lucky, you, you needed to be, you could fly down but you need to be careful at the bottom because there was a sharp right, sharp left hand torn at the bottom and that took you out uh, beside Baker and Carlin's shop on one side and O'Hare's the cobbler's and you know, Speaking there's a the thing now, that area, North Street, uh, up the top, the top of Mill Street, you had the Combry Brothers, cobblers. You had uh, a man called Kane further down uh, North Street beside your own place. Mm -hmm. You're, I remember your mineral establishment on both sides of the road and uh, you had the Mount Cain cobbler, then you had uh, Woods cobbler and then you had uh, O'Hare's that I'm after speaking about. And that's another thing about North Street. You had the mineral, you had the mineral, your mineral waterworks in North Street and you had Bowdens in Water Street. Like the industry that was in that area, you had grocers. I remember the farmers coming in the weekend and the coal was t just tipped in to the back of the cart. O'Hare's, uh, Dr. Shorthold's grandfather had his shop there and uh, they also had a shopping drama at your place. But the one in Water Street was really catered for the farmers and the mail. 
Mm. The, bags are, the bags are made. They're all sadly gone. And then you had also, uh, but then there's a lot of pubs around there too. Now here's a, here's a very interesting photograph here. Actually, in fact, it's upside down. Um, now tell us, tell us what we're looking at here, Eamon. We're in, looking at... In Old North Street. We're looking at what they knew as Bella Craigan's lodging house. Right. Now... Now, there's, there, there, there's a wee bit of controversy with local historians regarding this building, isn't that right? Right, there is. How many a time I was in it. Right. Especially on the Saturday night, uh, when we closed up the shop, uh, Bella would take the giblets for the fire for making stock and soup for the lodgers. And if we, had, if we could just concentrate first, a lot of people are of the opinion that King William stayed. Yeah. But I'm placing my knowledge on the late Major Reside, who was a great friend of my grandfather. And my grandfather was a, a local historian too. And they claimed that there was no way that William, because they didn't think that he even touched the town. Uh, Major Reside was of the opinion that uh, the route fired by William to the Bine was along the lane of the Pleasant Railway Lane which would make sense. You couldn't get an army into it. That was the town. Like, Hill Street was uh, waterlogged. Yeah. It was, it was, it was the, the, the so-called low ground. The low ground, yeah. Yeah. And uh, there was no way they would get an army up. Well, I think one of the one of the, the, uh, the local historians that talks about it is uh, he also claims that uh, Bagnus Castle isn't the, the right site for that castle at all. Well, that's, again, be, the, yeah, well, some people did think that uh, the old St. Coleman's Hall was the site. Other people would tell you the top of the old Mill Street was the site of the castle. So you're going... Now, the only thing is that you have an old building yeah, where by, yeah. you know, well, old walls. Well, now, um, when, you were, when you were a young fella growing up now, um, Hill Street was a busy thoroughfare and this picture here uh, we think is circa around oh, 64, right, 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 65 well, well mid 60s maybe slightly later and oh. a, famous, a famous building there uh, right on the corner many wards established we're looking at wards now wards, our wards were a very very famous firm wards were big painting contractors yeah Wards sent workers all over the country, particularly into that. They did a lot of church work. Now, if you go to the left, James, you could go into where the back of the, what we were talking about earlier, the bus stop. Mm -hmm. There was a partial office there for, for and one with the back of Woolworths. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Woolworths was formerly Wayne, Rain Ross's. I don't know, I'm only going on what I heard of, you were also looking at the, we had two hotels in the centre of the town then, you had the Imperial Hotel. As we see here on the right. right we, we were kind of looking where the Boulevard, and the Boulevard was owned by Garlands. The Garlands who owned Bowdens, which was around, Bowdens Manor Water Works, which was around in Water Street. Now there's an interesting thing about uh, Bowdens Yard, and you, the older people remember China Grace. There's a plaque over China Grace. Now a lot of people don't know what it was, but the grandfather was from that area. That was a kind of the at that time that that was awarded it was something similar to what you had uh, a few years ago was the Queen's Award Industry. It was plaque. There was the state coach was renovated. Where Bowden Yard was. Mm -hmm. That uh, was actually uh, was it Lawson's? Lawson's, Lawson's uh, Coachworks. Correct. The, yes. And and it was later the the uh, the site for the Protestant working men's club, wasn't it? Well, I'm not sure on that, but just up from that was uh, the reading rooms where the Cochrane and Lawrence heads were displayed after they were hanged on uh, Gallows Hill. And there's actually the, Park. the Cochrane right. and Lawrence Memorial today is in John Mitchell Place, yes, isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was up in 1948 for the 150. There's also uh, here on the right hand side of the photograph, uh, there's bars. The now, bars. Tell us about the bars, Eamon. The bars was the meeting spot. See, at the bars, 
Well, actually, they were over from the bars where there were seats outside the then Mulworts. Uh-huh. And that was a meeting spot for, you met any one of your friends out of the bars, football teams, Gaelic teams, left the, from their, to go to play football matches from the bars. Uh, the Munson Minister Bank was there, it's gone now. The Belfast Bank, it's still there. Uh, they were two... Danska. Uh, it's Danska now. Uh, you also... Uh, you had the Florentine, of course. You had the Florentine where you sat all day on the Saturday and Sunday with a Coke. Or, or a and small a, chip for a, a tonner. A small chip. Uh, well, actually, you got shillings or chips. And then on the other, down on the other side, we had, uh, we had Filoni's, of course. Yeah, Filoni's. Opposite. And further down, you had Tommy and the satellite. Tommy, Tommy uh, Burns. You'd pay, I don't know what you'd pay now for the amount of chips you got for the shilling. Now, here's a very, a, very interesting, uh, a very interesting image here. And again, it shows how... Things have changed. Around 1968, yeah. this colour image yeah, of the port, and obviously it's taken from uh, what's now known yeah. as the Hillhead Road, Kate oh, Lennigan's yeah, Lone. Many a time I worked. Just Kate above Tomalane. Lone. And, and what, what is the... Well, we're looking at, first of all, we're looking at Park, uh, now Park Esther. Yeah. There's no stand. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at, I think, mate, uh, being seen who's up then. That's, that's right, mean, FMC, yeah, and then, then later uh, Anglo, uh, Anglo, uh, Anglo Irish. I've uh, seen who's up, uh, and uh, they're also looking for a roast coal yard in Lockingtons. And in, father in the worked, middle. Father worked in Lockingtons. An interesting thing, uh, we were looking out to school this morning, the, the uh, picture of the American Lockington coming yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, I don't think old Rourke's had... Uh, any boats of their own. Margaret Lockington, no. Fishers and Lockingtons. Fishers, and uh, we'll talk about them in a moment, but in the port, uh, coal, coal w in the later years was synonymous. Yes. Th there were coal yards right around right. the port. And then the yards were on the right over opposite, but the crane, I remember, I don't know if you remember or not, I remember the seed potatoes going out to Cyprus. Oh, yeah, yeah. On the pit yeah. tops. Another another iconic uh, another iconic building in that photograph uh, of the port is of course the B&A shed yeah. and the green yeah. the green doors. doors and yeah. this this ship in our next image uh, was Dundalk. was synonymous with the, uh, with the B&A yeah, line the Dundalk with the cattle Monday and excitement uh, the cattle coming from Patrick Street down through the town. And on the, the I remember the, the large there at the at the signal cabin. And Robert Dixon. Robert Dixon. Robert Dixon, and, God rest uh, him, uh, was the man who looked after them. What did he call it? Uh, Henry Ruddy. Henry Ruddy. Henry, you can still picture Henry in the arms out on uh, waving down. I yeah. remember once a sheep getting into the river. And uh, worked this way up the mall. I don't know how they got it out, but uh, half the time we was round watching the sheep in the There's a great a great story I remember my Uncle Daisy or um Your Uncle Daisy was captain of the He was the last new captain, captain on yeah. the Dundalk, Daisy Keenan. But um Darky McCavitt, a famous old docker from, from uh, O'Neill's Avenue, Darky used to tell the story uh, about the Dundalk would dock every Sunday. And uh, sail, as you said, on the Monday mm -hmm. with 600 cattle to Birkenhead. But uh, Darkey tells the story, or told the story, uh, of his job every Easter Sunday morning was to raise a new tricolour uh -huh. on the stern uh -huh. end of the Dundalk because she was an Irish right, registered sir. ship well, in you Dublin. Had, you had the Dundalk and the Ian Scar, the B&I line, formerly that had gone back slightly Related to us through marriage, it was formerly the Dundalk and Newry. That's right. And the McLaughlin family were very involved. Well, there was and in, in 1926, the, uh, the the British and Irish Steam Packet Company, B&A, bought over Dundalk and Newry. Yeah. And in 1938, this ship was built specially for the Newry Canal, the Dundalk, and she uh, worked on that route till it was withdrawn, uh, as I said, Daisy Keenan, been the last yeah. Newry captain in 1964. 
But uh, Darkey used to report to Desi on a Sunday morning, morning. and he'd say, yeah. job done, Thanks, Skipper. Sir. Now, funny <laughs> thing, just uh, <laughs> on that, where if there was an extra sale and did they keep the cattle? The cattle would have been kept in Drummond Lane. Uh, and up where the old Abbey Grammar. Oh, yes. Up in the park, as they were called the we park. We called it the park. park the park. Yeah. yeah. There was an extra sale there. I used to love to go down and watch the cattle being loaded on there. Uh, but you wouldn't do that near the traffic. Oh, not at all. Not at all. But then just on, on that scale, uh, there was the, the footbridge. Yeah. At the, at the railway cabin. Well, here, if we, if we look at this next image, we can see that. We've got the, uh, the railway cabin uh, to, the, to the background. And we also have the, the B&A shed, yeah. or the B&A office, uh, with and the chimney on the right hand yeah, side, and the sign for Lockingtons, and the sign for Lockingtons. So there's quite a lot in that photograph. Yeah. We've got the signal the cabin. cabin. We've got the overhead bridge over the Warren Point Erie Railway. Seven with ten dockers. And look at the shovels. Yes, I remember them. I can still picture, still picture them coming home with the shovel. Whatever way they didn't hold it, they could sit the shovel on. The shoulder didn't hold the shaft and walk, and the blackened faces and that. And there are, it would take time there. I can I do recognize, but the names aren't coming back at the moment. I also see the spire of St. Mary's Church, and uh, that's gone now where that it was a high building then uh, at the bottom of Mary Street. And of course, many of these men drank in, you know, in, uh, in murders. And, and, and O.J. Hollywood's on the corner. O.J. Hollywood's went, uh, and he, where Fisher's Jar, uh, Fisher Park is now. And of course, uh, son of the years taught us in school, Jimmy Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also, you had the uh, Fisher's Garage was. That's there right. Too. The garage was and there. And then you well. had the other, the uh, rail lane crossing going up to Edward Street. At Buttercrane. At Buttercrane. Uh, Yes, when you think of it, you had two rail, well, many, you know, your Dublin Bridge, you had uh, Edward Street, and you had uh, the uh, the Green Ore Lane in Bridge Street. Bridge Street, they, sadly. We had two well, waterways, we had uh, two railways, lanes through the yeah, town, yeah. that's all gone now, now you're the main lane, what was known as the main lane, is now near East Station. Now, we spoke earlier on, Eamon, about uh, how important the coal trade was. And, of course, fishers were the predominant company. And uh, we're looking at an image of the uh, the ship's flag that they used, the red, white and blue with the black F. And that flew on all the, 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 the ships. The, the famous fishers blue because their lorries, their big 26 tonners, yeah. were also blue. Well, they they operated a fleet of uh, fourteen steamers, uh, and their last new build ship. We have a photograph of it uh, coming up later, but there is a great photograph of Fisher's Yard. Yeah, yes. And it'll show it'll show the viewers the 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 magnitude of the Fisher operation in the coal yard. I mean, this what we're looking at covers the entire the, grabs. the, the entire keys. Yeah. Shopping the, complex. Yeah, the two grabs, the bag and plant. Yeah. The shovels. Yeah. Lorries. Uh, that was a, high, a trade in the industry then, the, the port. And also, like, when you think of it, uh, when the railway was, the railway was at its prime, the wagons were, I remember, coal wagons on the basin. And the coal went all over. That's right. Direct from Europe. Now, the two cranes that you mentioned, they came in 1954. There was one single one on its own. Yeah. But we call it a grab. That's right. These two came in, in, in 54, and it did, a, did away with a lot of the dockers. The, the, yeah, but then you had, you, had, you had two, you had uh, future dockers, and then you had the other dockers that worked on the other side, that worked in the B&A. Yeah. And uh, they worked at the pit props. But then, James, we're forgetting about there's no none there at the moment, but up towards Dublin Bridge, the timber boats used to come in. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, um, for the benefit of, of, of younger people that will be watching this, Fisher's 
major timber yard was where Buttercream Green. Shopping Centre is indeed, today. Yeah. So the the entire property mm. from uh, Dumb Lane Mill, you from Dumb Lane yeah. Mill right to, down to, to, to Francis, Francis Street, the quayside, that was all yeah, in the ownership of the Fisher family. family. And interestingly, one of the men here that drove one of these cranes was uh, Joe Poocher. That's right, yeah. Jackie Poocher's yeah, yeah. father, the international yeah. footballer. Did, did, did Billy McCormick drive one of the... Billy took over, he was Joe Poocher's son-in-law, oh, and yeah. he took over when Joe retired. retired. And Barney McShane from the Meadow. Meadow. I remember Barney on the council. Barney, Barney drove the, the other, other one. one. And he was a member of the oh. old McShane family from Hillhead. I didn't know that. And they were all stevedores and fishers. Yeah. yeah, the Maguires were all through stevedores too. Yeah. So you had. But just an interesting thing, before we leave that area, James, they used to, I don't know whether you remember it or not, but just beside the railway gates, at the, the B&I office, there was a stone. Yes. Right. That's right, yeah. They, well, the dockers would, well, that's where they got their, they would have to, queue up and see if they were been signed on for what was called getting the score sure, getting the score and, and Barney uh, Maguire would have been the man Barney, for that wouldn't uh, he uh, Barney had his gang there but what we're going to say it's uh, Jim Larkin 1907 strike was it the lockout the lockout he addressed the the, uh, the dockers from there but then we're going back into I'm not can't remember I shouldn't I didn't listen enough you did uh, Ring the Ring Fern, James Fern, mm -hmm. who was involved with uh, Larkin and, and Connolly. Mm. Uh, I've seen something that somebody is there and trying to commemorate. They've seen the piece in, that's the, right, that's in right. the paper. They're, they were looking for relatives, relatives. to come forward. Yeah, but I'm not, I think there are relatives. I'm not, I don't want to see it. I have to, well, unfortunately, I don't need to ask, but I've, in my mind, I think I know relatives. I'm not 100% sure. Well, now, but the funny thing, before we leave there, James, again, on the B&A side, uh, as I said, we would never concentrate too much on North Street end, but my grandfather, as you know, had a poultry business in North Street. Yes. And uh, in the, up the partition that was going well, I believe, I heard that there was up to 17 or 18, maybe 20 people. That's right, I, uh, I, I've employed heard that. Because they used to send... Export, I suppose, to Manchester. Uh, chickens, ducks, you name it, anything in the poultry line. Even I uh, seen one, seen an order one time, we're looking at the old book for pigeons. And they were sent right through the BNA, either through the BNA, depending on where and who the, the customer in Manchester was, either go out in the BNA, either go out through Vinor, uh, or go out through. Uh, Dundalk and the pony and cart would be post haste to get the tide. Mm -hmm. they actually, that was the, the secret to catch the tide. Yeah. And uh, the, the most of the chickens and poultry uh, that McIntyre's got came from Trulli. Partition ruined that. Mm -hmm. The export license was lost. Not only for uh, McIntyre's, but Willis's bed, McCann's bed, all went. I heard stories. There was a cousin of my father's. Grandfather's nephew, Vincent McLaughlin, started in Wills's Bakery on Easter Monday, 1916, a very significant day. He started work and he was allocated to his future father-in-law. And what would happen is they would load up in Wills's Bakery, which is in Monaghan Street, and head for Green Ore and the Cooley Peninsula. And by the time they got to Green Ore Station, there was a wagon of bread down be topped up again. That was horse and cart. We had a far better, uh, far better infrastructure uh, 70 years, 80 years yeah. ago than we have today. You could do things then that you can't well, do today. The check came back from Manchester in a couple of days. Well, there and you are. Post, post then, there was three, three days, po three I mean, posts a day. You can't even ring your local bank today and speak to anybody yeah. in the bank. It's a call centre or somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, and I remember growing up, you had the morning and afternoon post. That's right. And I used to live like this. My mother was from Bray. My mother was from Bray, and Mommy used to get letters, and they didn't come in the morning post, came in the afternoon post. Well, Eamon, um, here, here we see an image of the last 
New build ship that Fisher's had, the, the Olive. Yeah. Brian O'Keefe took her to Newry yep, Brown. I remember Brian. 1963. And that's a photograph for passing down past uh, Fadden Park, oh. or where Fadden Park is today. Yeah. There was no Fadden Park then. Yeah. But um, that was the biggest ship that Fisher's had, and um, that was her in, in 1963. And this, this man, this is an iconic an iconic man, not just in the history of Fisher's, but uh, in in shipping in general. Uh, Captain Harry Hollywood from the Omeath Road. I've heard of Captain Harry Hollywood. Known as we Harry, and uh, Harry did uh, 64 years, believe it or not, at sea. He, he signed on when he was 14, and he worked up until he was 78 in, uh, in 1953, and he retired, and he died the following mm -hmm. year. He's buried down in St Mary's, and uh, this image of him uh, was taken uh, when he was awarded the MBE for his services during the war. Oh, I see he uh, has his, his uh, hardly decorations there, but the funny thing just made me think, James, there's the old saying is, old soldiers never die. No. They simply fade away, so that's what happened to Harry. Well, Harry, Harry uh, as I say, he was known as we, Harry. Uh, he was only five foot tall. And he had a stand on a wooden box to see out over the ship's wheel. But they said, they said uh, we men came, Napoleon was small. Now, My grandfather wasn't a big man at beside, beside the port, Eamon, we have uh, the very the very important then, and, and it's a beautiful building, thankfully it's still there, Drummelian Mill. Good. And, and uh, what do you remember what of that remember? As, a, as a young lad? I remember, well, all the, gir the girls... Oh, you'd remember the girls all right. Yeah. Oh, well, they were, older, they were slightly older than me, James. Right. Uh, I don't really ma uh, remember Drummond in its plane. But what I do remember when he was at school, I was in Tarnagry when I was at school, the, the Millhorn. Yeah. 7 o'clock in the morning, say past 7. You could, at that, uh, you have to sit down and think at the various times. But at that time in year, you needed no watch. You could hear, the, you knew the sound, the time by the, the horn. I think one started maybe, I think, half six. And then there was one about quarter to seven. I think the girls started at seven. And the last one, there was one at five to seven. Give them your five minutes, hurry up. I think that they were they lost nearly a day's pay if they were late, I think. Yeah, many of the mills operated a system. Mm -hmm. Uh, that if you were late and the gate was locked, right. that was it. That you, you didn't uh, you didn't get in there. And then you had another uh, uh, blast at half seven. I think Fisher's had one a quarter to eight and five to eight. One but of the memories that I have, Eamon, of Drummond and Mill is the belching black smoke coming from the chimney. I can remember. And there was, a, there was an entrance in a walk, a pedestrian entrance for the for the women, from Bridge Street, just above the the, the railway gates, uh, opposite where the Tindley shop, where, yeah, where Tinley's, uh, where uh, the tire place is now. That's where Modern Tires tire, is. Tire. There was an entrance in, uh, Gateway, and then of course over the Drummond Road, where you still turn down to the Keys today. That was the entrance into the mill itself. That's where the the traffic went in. But uh, they're, they're uh, just thinking, James, like, uh, the Hill Irvine family were responsible for it, which goes on to, there's a, uh, a set for another day. The he he was married to uh, John Mitchell's Mrs. Sister. sister. And then you're, like, you're talking about four that are over in Dominic Street, uh, Jenny Verner. And that they would go on and on. Like, Your passed. grandmother, you told me, was at John Mitchell's funeral, isn't no, that right? No, my grand, grand aunt. I'm pleased Mrs. Fitzpatrick, she was Grandad's oldest sister. She was born in 1861, and she died in 1861. She it was only three months short of the 100. So she was very small. She would have lady. been she would have been 14, 14 when John Mitchell died, died, isn't that right? Yeah. He died in 1875, 25. and your your grand aunt went attended the, dead, the funeral. And the funeral went right round Monaghan Street, down the Merchants Quay, Sugar Island, up. Right Sandy Street and up <laughs> and down High Street. <laughs> we were asking our cameraman Sean earlier 
on if you remember the uh, if you remember the canal working and he it had closed twenty yeah, years yeah, before he was born. But so he hardly remembers John Mitchell's funeral. But uh, it's funny like uh, history is not that long ago. It's only uh, it's somebody else's life. Like I remember Aunt Bridget. Aunt Bridget was that that was uh eighteen seventy five and then like Aunt Bridget mother the farm and like these things they're only like life is short you're passing through it's, it's famous events are only within the memory of living people but um uh, just to to, to 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 finish on john mitchell um i've read reports that there were there were ten thousand people at his funeral well i don't know i never really i will, will I wasn't old enough to ask Aunt Bridget then, but it did. Uh, Father used to say that, uh, and they also went out uh, to uh, John Martin sooner. But uh, he did. John Martin died twelve uh, days honest after John, John Martin. Mitchell. Honest John Martin. And both of them died over in, in, in the in house in Drumlin. Yeah. So um, here's um, a, a picture of of uh, a young young man, uh, obviously. I think it's the first mass, and uh, I believe that's Father Tomley. That's isn't Father Tomley. He was a school with Father Tomley. Uh, many day Father Tomley passed the docks, and maybe he went up the lane to school. Yeah. Or that, or uh, over past John Mitchell's house, but uh, for, he's still alive and well over in Saint Catherine. Yeah, he's a member of the Dominican the community, North. and in actual fact, uh, just as you're saying about how time goes. I think uh, Pat has done uh, about 42 years uh, service as a priest now. He would have been roughly about that, yeah. I remember, I remember him going away. He, he would, but Pat was an older boy in the Dominican. But then there was no Drummond in Chapel then. No, no. Drummond Lane went, people went to Mars in Dominican. Yeah. Well, Mickey Brady was telling me, Eamon, the night that we did the presentation for his mother there in uh, Buttercrane. As you know, Mrs. Brady was 104, Four, yeah. and Mickey was telling me that night that uh, Father Collins, uh, who was ordained in 1964, uh, he lived 50 years. He'll be 50, 50 years, years ordained yeah. next. He was year. another older boy in the Dominican. Yeah, but Mickey told me that he served his first mass. Very good, right? And he, and he got a favour, and he said like it was a huge amount of money to get five pounds. Uh, 50 years yeah, ago. Yeah, well, they, all the boys used to like things like that, weddings and all now. They used to get tips. Well, I wasn't an older boy, but they, I was on the cathedral choir. Right. The junior choir in the cathedral, but we never had any occasion like that there, but you would hear... And of course, old, would you have been busy watching the girls in Drummond and Mill, you never thought of signing on the dotted line for a, a priest's job in the Dominican yourself, Eamon? No, I know. I'm ta uh, I'm talking about the altar boys, and the altar boys got the tip of weddings. Oh, I know, but I'm saying uh, you never, you never thought about the priestly life yourself. No, James, I don't. <laughs> I, don't I don't think I had even worth it. I made a stuck it. But uh, well, I suppose in the way we weren't the Dominican Catholics, which you used to say in your, we were more the other end of the old chapel, up that end of the town. But James, you set me thinking there about. Who all our altar boys and the McCrinks, remember the McCrink boys? Yeah, uh, yeah. They were all altar boys, Harry McCrink and, and that. And the Russells. The Russells. Anthony and Mickey. Uh, no but, altar um, boys now. It's been lovely talking to you, Eamon. Uh, uh, it's been a, a, a real trip down memory lane. And uh, the next time that uh, the next time that you're in, um, we'll have to have a good chat about the, the, the poultry business and your grandfather. Uh, but I think you've given everybody a flavour of how things were in that area today. And thanks very, very much.